Hey guys! As you guys know, I have Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder, and I wanted to just talk about some tips that I think will help anybody with any autoimmune disorder, or if you have any um, severe health symptoms. And I think these ones are actually all very simple, and they are actually things that anybody can do, whether or not you have some sort of a health issue. So let's get right into it. One of the first things is definitely to focus on yourself, to fill your cup, to do whatever it takes so you are at 100%. And I know that this isn't going to be with your health because you can't magically make it better, but what you can do is fill your soul, fill your inside to say, hey, you know, I feel full, I feel like I've taken care of myself and I feel like I've given everything I can give myself so it can do its healing. For me, it is to have some sort of a good routine or it's like a healthy routine, and it's also to get my regular massages, get my mani-pedis, make sure that, you know, overall I feel and look my best, and um, also just to make sure that I'm getting some time in for myself in the day and that's really hard to do as a single mom with a toddler, but you just make the time, you schedule it. So I wasn't able to meditate very much before, but now I'm just kind of at a point where I just don't care. So as I put my toddler down to sleep, I say, okay, it's time to go to sleep. I turn off the lights and I say, mommy's gonna meditate now. So you can either sit here and meditate with me or you can go to sleep. Of course, I wanna sit there with me, but he ends up falling asleep. So that's kind of a uh, way to kind of get around that. So it really is possible because I know I've said for years that I was like, I can't meditate because I have a toddler. I just can't. And look at me now, like I'm able to still do it. You just have to set that boundary for yourself and get that done. So definitely fill up your cup however you can and as often as you need to. So the second thing is boundaries. And I know I mentioned this just a little bit ago. And the reason why I say this is that it's so important for you to set boundaries for yourself of what you can and cannot do. And uh, limitation wise, whether it is physically or emotionally or mentally. I know it's not easy, I get that, but you just set something for yourself and do what you can to limit that interaction. Now, if there is something that is on a daily basis, um, really frustrating for you, you set the boundaries of what they can and cannot push you around to do. So you set those boundaries there, whether it's at work, in a personal relationship, whatever it is, you need to set that boundary for yourself, but only you know what that is. So take the time to sit there and really figure out what's causing you that issue, what would be the ideal, and try to come up with something in between that so you have less stress on yourself. Now, one more thing that I want to add to this is not only is it the boundaries, is also to delegate. So if you have something that you do regularly, but it takes up your time or energy, make sure that you can try to delegate off that to someone else, pay someone else to do it if you can afford it, or to find an alternative solution to it. So another thing that I also would suggest in this realm that I wanted to add in is to ask for help because you can definitely do everything yourself and you can set these boundaries, but it's so much harder for you to just rely on yourself. And I know some people, you don't have anyone that you can rely on. So you can either pay for someone or make some friends who might even be going through the same thing as you are. And with this, it's the same thing. Try to find someone who is maybe in the same boat as you or maybe has gone through what you've gone through or just someone who is like there for you um, emotionally or support, even that is helpful. So find the people around you who you can actually delegate things to. So whether it's delegating a physical task or it's actually just that person that you can turn to for support to like listen to you or if it's someone who you can just go to for advice. Like you have certain types of people and personalities that you can actually go to for these things. So try to figure out who they are and if not, then try to also figure out how to get those types of people into your life to help you out. And there's a lot of support groups out there, so try looking at those. The third thing, I don't think that this is something that I should have to even mention, but I know that we're living in this new era of lots of things going on at the same time, and we have a lot of 
easy and quick ways to do things because we are all so stressed. And so I think the biggest, 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 biggest thing um, is stress. It's really a silent killer. Um, there are people who go to the hospital for stress and they have real medical health emergencies because it's they're so stressed in their lives. And so hopefully that's not the way that you have to live, but hopefully you can actually limit the stress that you have. And the way I really recommend to do this is to sit down one day when you're ready and really just write down everything that you feel like stresses you out or is in your head. So kind of like a brain dump, but emotional dump really. And so you go in there and you kind of put down everything, 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 everything that you are thinking about or have been bothering you or have caused you some sort of stress or additional anxiety throughout the weeks and write that all down. And then after you write it down, make another column next to it and say, hey, this is how I can actually make it better and how I can make it less stressful and what I can do for next time. And just keep doing that and chipping away at it until you get to a good place where you feel like you're not stressed or you're able to manage your stress a lot better. But it will take some time because stress is something that you may get through without feeling it. Um, but afterwards, you do feel it because your body does obviously take a fight or flight kind of take on things and tries to help you. So that's something you just need to be aware of. And I will share one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize, but this is out of my own personal experience, is that I went and got a blood test um, done. And in that, I was checking to see where I was deficient and what I kind of needed to do to kind of replenish all these different deficiencies. And one of the things is that I was so stressed out that my levels were so high in my cortisol, and on top of that, it ate into other nutrients to manage my stress. So I didn't know that that could happen, um, but that's what my um, doctor told me, and I wanted to just share that because I don't think people recognize how harmful stress is on your body and how much your body can actually take on without you even knowing what it's doing. So that's just something to keep in mind, but be really cognizant of it because it really, really is a silent killer. Now the fourth thing, this is something that I think is another standard thing that everyone should be practicing even when healthy, but it's so much more important when you have a weakness in you and that's such like an autoimmune issue. So this is just to be healthy. And by being healthy, this means that you're going to exercise. Exercising doesn't mean that you have to do lifting weights, doing CrossFit, doing like marathons. It doesn't mean that. It could be as simple as just walking outside, regular walking, not like, you know, um, you know, speed walking or anything. Regular walking for maybe like 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes. And if you really can't do anything, just go stand outside for five, 10 minutes. Get out there and just like stand out in the sunshine because vitamin D is good for you. So that's something I highly recommend. Whether you can do a lot or you do a little, do something better than nothing. The other side of that is going to be what you're eating. I'm still trying to figure this out. But what I have figured out is that you can sneak in a lots of greens and veggies into your smoothies into your foods without it really killing you and you figuring it out and being so disgusted by what you're eating. You can do these little things to make it better for you, but yet it'll make a huge impact over time on your health. So um, overall, what I seem to have noticed is they always say to add veggies into your diet. So you don't have to go vegan or vegetarian, but you do have to add in a lot more vegetables. So make it like at least half of what you're eating. And again, like I said, if you cannot tolerate eating vegetables, then try to do it in a smoothie form because it's sweeter and it tastes better. I know that if you are eating meat, you want to make sure it is organic or coming from a very clean place where they're not eating hormones and, you know, other bad chemicals. And another thing that's really simple part of health and diet is drinking enough water. Definitely up your intake as much as you can. I love hydro flask bottles. I think that they actually keep everything really cold for a whole entire day and I don't have to worry about it. And I like cold water. 
So cold and hot, you can use it in a hydro flask, but it'll last all day long. And I feel like having a straw suction cup is going to be a lot easier for me to drink more of versus having to like twist open the cap and drink it out of there. So doing those little things to try to figure it out. A hydro flask is what, like $20, $30? and you can buy a cheaper version or anything else for a lot cheaper. So if it requires you to go buy a bottle, like a cute bottle or a bottle where it has a straw to make you drink more, go and do that because the results are gonna be huge in comparison to that $23 or a hospital bill for thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now last but not least, I think another important thing is for you to figure out your priorities. You need to slow down that's for sure, no matter what, you need to slow down and you need to figure out your priorities. What's important to you in life? What do you want your life to be of? Um, what do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? You need to write all these things down and come up with this dream, ideal life that you want to lead because if you continue down this path that you were on, it's going to lead you to where you're at. Stop what you're doing, slow it down, and really figure out what your priorities are. So write down everything that you um, see yourself enjoying or not enjoying and what kind of a life that you want to lead. And again, similar to figuring out your stressors where you're gonna make the column of what stresses you out and what will actually kind of help you in relieving the stress is to go through and figure out what your ideal dream life is. What it is right now that you're kind of living your current situation and then what you want it to be like and when you figure that out you'll see exactly the comparison between the two so it'll be very clear to you hopefully at that point when you can visualize it now once you get to this point where you can see the two comparisons you want to kind of try to figure out the hybrid between the two of what you can and cannot change so if in your job right now you need money and you're not a financial place, then you cannot just quit your job and live the stream life that you want. You know, that would just be great for everyone to do, right? But you can't do that. So work on the steps of what can get you there. So whether it's selling some things like getting some extra money, whether it is for you to find another job, which is gonna be more flexible, another job that's gonna be a closer commute, whatever it is, try to figure out what that balance is that you can do in between because it'll still be better than where you're at now. So if you see the gist of what all of these points are trying to get at, is to try to get to a place better than now. Because right now, you're obviously watching this video because you want to improve your life in some way, right? You want to make your life a little bit easier, a little bit better. And that's what I'm here to try to tell you, is that you don't need it to be a grand leap of betterness and greatness. You just need to make at least a baby step up. And so even those baby steps as it grows, you're gonna be able to accumulate more and more and more to want to do more and more and more. And that's gonna give you the momentum to get to where you wanna be and start thinking in that way and becoming that way. Think about it, you've had so many years to train yourself to be who you are now. You can't instantaneously change it and be this whole other person. So you need to work at being this person that you want to be. So. I encourage you guys to really start with, at the very least, doing something to go fill up your own cup today because that's so important. Um, you're, you're the only one that's going to know what that is that fills you up. So try to figure those things out and get on it. All right. See you guys soon. Bye.